So we just pull in to our campsite for the night. We were setting up our iCamper um, rooftop tent and we decided to also set up the NX S, uh, the little NX room that comes with the iCamper Sky Camp 2.0, and you'll see us setting it up. Jeremy, tell us how you feel about um, the setup for this. Is it easy, difficult? Well, I'm I'm a lazy guy, um, but it's relatively easy. It takes ten minutes together. Yeah, we got a pretty good system down and. There's only a few stakes to put down. They have this nice rope system that let you tighten it. So it's pretty nice. This is one of the few dispersed camp spots along the Rice Peak Trail and you can find information for these camp spots off of the Trails Off-Road website for Rice Peak. So after coffee, breakfast, kind of hanging out, we headed out. It's roughly 5.5 miles to the peak. It's Coronado National Forest. Pretty much kind of crisscross in and out here uh, on Pepper Sauce Creek. I found this to be slightly technical, couple little spots here that was fun. And so you're just kind of basically going through the rocky creek, getting a little flex, but nothing too crazy. And we're all very pleasantly surprised how lush this area is, even in the tail end of winter. Um, all the oak trees are providing beautiful shade and um, the greenery was a nice change after the winter months.
So there's a fire in uh, 2017, as you can kind of see here, uh, called the Burrow Fire. Um, the Forest Service has improved this road because during that fire, they needed to um, get crew up. And so they flattened, smoothed it out. So the only real obstacle that is in this section is the dead man's drop. Uh, and it's just a little bit of a tighter sh spot on the shelf road and a little bit of off camber washout. Um, but it wasn't really that bad. Uh, you can kind of see a little bit of washout, but we're pretty sure that their improvement of the road just kind of made all of this pretty decent. So you just got to keep an eye uh, as you come around and it gets a little tight there. All right, Jeremy's totally downplaying this. Um, the washouts and the narrow shelf road are very scary to me. So I would say <laughs> you still want to watch where your tire placement is and make sure you try to, you know, give yourself plenty of room around the washouts. I suppose she is on the downhill side, so that's a factor that I didn't have to deal with. So shortly after we settled in at the peak, um, we know there were two other Jeeps heading this way, so we made room for them. Um, the space uh, at the peak is only big enough, barely big enough to fit four Jeeps in there. So we, we were glad they were able to make it up. They went a different way to come up. So after chatting a bit uh, with the other two Jeepers, we started heading back down obviously the views are pretty uh pretty awesome and so we just start working our way back down it's steep and as jack's pointing out here uh, you can see it's 20 to 25 degrees of a decline and then there's the switchbacks so that side by side came up and he just parked himself up on that hill so that we could navigate uh, the switchback. Obviously, for the side to sides, no big deal. Uh, even a two door Jeep, no big deal. Uh, four door Jeeps, not a big deal, but you may have to do a three point turn. We did a couple of times. Just take it slow if you need to spot yourself or check. So, this gives you a view of the switchbacks. We were uh, joking that. Uh, this gives us a little bit of practice for Black Bear Pass in Colorado, which every time I mention uh, Jack just gives me a look I'm like, um, yeah, that's a great idea. Not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still too scared of the off camper narrow shelf road right next to a cliff um, kind of trail. But well, we're doing some good practices um, here in the Arizona we have a lot of cool trails like that. Yeah, and no snow, so. Yeah, no snow. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> 